Okay, to be honest, I've been in my little editing hole all day and I was planning on going to the bookstore, but now it's like five and I don't know if I want to. We'll see, I'm almost done. myself to go. I'm packing up some books because I'm going to the used bookstore so I can bring books that I don't need anymore and get a credit. And the only reason I'm picking this up is because I just got and started A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but I got it in paperback. And so this also needs to be paperback. I only got this one physically because I wanted it on my shelf and the plan was to get the whole series because I read it on a Kindle like so long ago. So I'm gonna bring it back and get all the paperbacks of these so they can all match. But besides that, I don't know if I'm gonna get anything else. I have a ton on my radar, but I also have a ton to read, so. Oh my gosh. Uh, I went in there and I went in like the minute that they stopped taking like donations i don't know why that was so hard for me to think of and he was so rude to me i was like no no no, no. i can come back a different day it's okay and he's like this is the last two that we're doing and then when i came up to get my ticket to get like my store credit the other guy was so nice and oh i didn't even get anything because i was so stressed out the whole time but that's okay uh, because I did need to bring, I've been needing to bring those books for so long. I did look, they only have like two copies of The Hunger Games in paperback and they both looked really messed up. So I think I'm just going to wait and come back later, <sighs> which is fine. But I feel accomplished. Um, I think I should probably stop at the grocery store on my way home. It's a thought. See, people are still walking in. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I haven't really talked about it yet, but basically I found out that this one bookstore that I go to in Nashville sometimes, it's owned by an author, right? I knew that part. So when other authors go on their book tours, a lot of times is usually one of their stops, which I did not know. Or at least I didn't know it was authors that I was familiar with. Because I've never read, her name is Ann Patchett. I've never read any of her books. I would like to. It's on the list. But I think she does more like contemporary fiction, um, which I don't read a ton of. Anyways, I'm on there. I see B.E. Schwab. And so I was like, oh my gosh, have to go. So me and my friends, if we can get tickets, are going to go to that next month. And then I just happen to be scrolling along on Instagram. I don't even follow her. I do now. <laughs> I do now. I see that Mona Awad, I didn't even know she was coming out with another book, coming to Parnassus. Immediately buy. Immediately buy. And I didn't even have to buy anything. I just had to register for it. And it's today. And I'm so excited. I would definitely consider her one of my favorite authors. She wrote Bunny and she wrote All's Well. In both of them, she has this way of writing very like trance like mental spaces she writes unreliable narrators really well she's got some like eerie dark humor going on and i love it so i'm going to that today after work got a very like ballerina girl aesthetic going on you can't really see it but i've got like a little bow a little ribbon bow in my hair but yeah i'm just i'm so excited i've never been to one of these and so i'm just really curious to see what it's going to be like and what she's going to say or if we're going to be like able to ask her questions which i don't even know i don't even know if i'm going to be able to articulate myself well enough to like form a question that i actually want to know like what even what do i want to know you know i'm for sure z's buying her new book 
I brought Bunny with me just in case, um, but I really hope that she does signings and stuff, and I really don't know how many people are going to be there, because they said that it's going to be, like, a limited, limited seating. I don't know if it's sold out. I don't know anything. I don't know anything, except for that I will be there, and she will be there, and that is all that I care about. I just saw somebody pass me driving a dark green, like dark, oh my god, they're in front of me now, dark like emerald forest green bronco how does it feel to see someone live in your dreams i'm so pretty okay i'm off work and i have quite a bit more time than i thought that i did before the thing so i'm driving to frothy monkey on 12 south it is low-key stressing me out a little bit though because i've passed it so many times and it's really cute but I don't know. Today is just one of those days where I like don't want to be perceived. I'm just gonna force myself to go and read for a little bit and hang out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just kidding. Why am I so awkward? The social anxiety really gets me. It really gets me, guys. I went and I was nervous and I was like, ooh, I don't know how their like ordering system works. And I stood outside, this is embarrassing. I stood outside for like a solid five minutes because it says wait to be seated by host in like a million places before I actually went in because now I don't have to be seated to order. And that was not clicking with me and I didn't want to do anything wrong. So I did nothing at all. Um, and then I was like, hey, is the outside seating available? I see that like you have to be seated by a host. And they're like, yeah, we do table service. Just grab a host and let them know and you can just hang out. And I'm like, perfect. Who's the host? No one's outside. Who's the host? And that stressed me out so much that I just decided to take a little walk around. And now I am on route to Parnassus Books and ETA is 20 minutes early, but that's fine because I can scope out what's going on in there. The latte I got is honestly pretty good. Scrumptious! Oh my god, please don't hit me. Nobody hit me. Fuck! Stress! I don't even know where I'm going, going on. Why are they going so fast behind me? I need to chill. I need to chill. These are gorgeous houses. Okay, so I'm finishing the last little bit of King of Blood and Ash, and the girls are gonna come over and we're gonna talk about it, and Amber's gonna post it on her channel. So I'll link that below. And Kristen and Carly's. But I'm low-key a little disappointed. I really wanna see what they say about it. I would love to hear their opinions. But this and the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I'm almost done with that. I'll probably finish it tonight or tomorrow. Both of these books, I was really into at the beginning. Like the first half of the books, loved. And then the second half of the books just really fell flat for me. Both of them ended up being like pretty predictable, the second half, and I've kind of just been rushing through them. So I don't know if it's like a me thing or if it's the books or what's going on. <sighs> I feel like I've been working nonstop and I'm just so tired and I'm really excited to see them, so. I also haven't had much time, but I have to update you on how the book signing went. It was incredible. I need to sit down when I have a little bit more time and tell you about it. I love her though. I just, I love her and I bought the book and I... Okay, so I'm on my way to work now. It's Thursday. 
girls came over last night, had the best time, and we had a lot of really similar views on the book, which is interesting because that's happened the past two times, but we all have very different reading styles or like things that we like. Like we typically have different opinions, so. But I figured I would take this time to tell you guys how the Mona Awad book tour thing went. It was incredible. Um, first of all, she has such presence in the room and she's so tall and like elegant and ah, just everything. Love her. So she started out with reading a little chunk of the new book, Rouge. Rouge? Not Rogue. Is it Rogue or is it Rouge? I think it's Rouge. Now I'm second guessing myself. So she reads this little part and she's like, I'm not giving you guys context. And we're like, hee 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 hee. Okay, that's fine. So she reads it and of course it's like a little eerie section. Very much her. Like she has such a particular voice to all of her stories. And she talked about that a lot too. When it's a Mona Awad book, you know it's a Mona Awad book, you know what I mean? Then there was a girl at the bookshop that was a really big fan of hers. I got to interview her, which was really cool. She asked really good questions. Um, and then they opened it up and then we all got to ask questions. There was probably like 45-ish people, maybe 50 people. And I asked one of the last questions because I was like, hyping myself up the whole time and this girl sat next to me who was so nice and so we were kind of chatting and I didn't even get her name but I was like we're friends now and literally had the same type of experience as me was obsessed with Bunny and then read All's Well and she was like I forced my girlfriend to read Bunny I forced her to read it and all the way through it she was like what's going on and I was like you're not supposed to know what's going on it's okay just finish the book and then we'll talk about it and I was like, oh my gosh, no, I did the same thing. I also forced people to read it and they gave me the same response. But I love it and I will continue forcing people to read it. One of the interview questions was kind of like, it prompted her to talk about how she was really scared to write funny because it was very like dipping into the fantasy, dipping into the horror genre, that whole thing. Her editor at the time hated the book and was like, no. She changed editors or publishers or whoever it was that didn't like it. She changed it and she released it and obviously, thank goodness. And so I had the question of you mentioned how taking that jump and kind of switching genres going into Bunny was super important for that like creative process and then now this book that she was talking about dips more into like gothic fairy tale horror kind of and so i was like is there another genre that you're interested in kind of like sinking your teeth into and she was like well you know i feel like i really found my spot in like the horror genre and playing with different aspects of that but I am working on something right now. She's writing a prequel to Bunny. She's writing a prequel to Bunny and of course everybody freaked out. We were all like, ah! And it's like in a bookstore so it was tiny screens. But oh my gosh, the tea continues to be spilled because then somebody asks her, how do you feel about movie and TV adaptations? Would you ever consider one? Are you considering one? Is there one in the works? How do you just feel about it? general for like maybe other works that you like and not your own work and blah, blah blah long story short someone is interested in not only bunny but the prequel to bunny so this is like kind of the ball is rolling and she was like the only stipulation that i really have that would be a deal breaker is if they didn't use my playlist for the movie or like adaptation and so we're like okay so it's happening which nothing, she was like, nothing set in stone, but like we're playing, we're tossing around the idea of it. Maybe. I was like, ah. I love that she's so like forthcoming with everything. She didn't like keep anything a secret. She was like, yeah, I want you guys to know, like you're in it with me. Like we're doing this together. And it was just so nice. I was like, ah. I wish that I could have like recorded the whole thing because it was honestly such a good interview. Of course it ended with her signing books 
and I did have to bring my copy of Bunny, which is like kind of falling apart at this point. It's completely tabbed up. Like, so before I jumped in line though, I went and I bought the new book that she was touring for, of course. Gorgeous, so gorgeous. And I just went up there and I should have thought of something to say, but I really just babbled on and was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Like, this was so great. And like, I loved all your answers and everything. And everybody had such good questions. And it was just so really cool to hear from you. And, blah, blah, blah. and I just like rambled a little bit. She was so nice. She was like, thank you so much for coming out and all this stuff. And it was her first time in Nashville, but ah, love her, love her. But anyways, I'll put pictures of it on the screen. She signed Bunny. It was like a little shorter, but then in the second one, it was like, to Kelsey, love you Bunny, XOXO. And I was like, ah! It's everything. And I put XOXO all the time. Like in every single one of my descriptions, I put like, love you, XOXO. And I just like say it in real life. And so it's just like, Yeah, so it was incredible. Now I'm obsessed with going to book signings. Like the whole time, all I could think of while I was there is like, I have to live in New York. I have to live in New York. So I have just like a plethora of all of these beautiful indie bookstores that I can go to, go to signings and events and stuff like that. I just, and everyone there was so nice. But today's Thursday, all week, every single day has felt like the next day. So like Tuesday felt like Wednesday and Wednesday felt like Thursday and today feels like Friday. So tomorrow's really gonna suck when it is Friday. And I'm like, I shouldn't be here at work. And then after I'm going to movie in the park, which is gonna be really fun. It's Pulp Fiction. I've never seen Pulp Fiction before, but one time I wore a wig for Halloween and everyone was like, are you the girl from Pulp Fiction? And I was like, no girl, it's gonna be a really good night. And thanks for coming on this like kind of week, kind of a few days vlog and listening to me ramble on about how much I love Mona Awad and bookstores. Have a great week and um, love you, Bunny. XOXO.